Local news about local people. This is Newslink Indiana. Thanks for joining us on NewslinkIndiana.com on this Wednesday, April the 1st of 2009. I'm Sam Thomas. Delaware County taxpayers may have something to be upset about following a state audit of the county of a county agency. Newslink's Megan Royce has the story. When John Brooke and Tom Bennington were Delaware County Commissioners as well as members of the County Drainage Board, they became suspicious about the actions of a member of the board, in particular the county surveyor. According to Bennington, they later became aware of the State Board of Accounts audit which pointed out discrepancies. From that point on, uh, we started uh, scrutinizing all the claims. One irregularity brought up in the audit was a debrushing on Stick City Road. Work Order 4483 in July of 2007 was given to Terry's Landscape, which is owned by the surveyor's stepson and daughter-in-law. They were to remove debris from Snyder Drain. Terry's Landscaping was paid $300 and then 22 days later issued another work request for the same task, but were paid more than $1,600. The county surveyor said that there were insurance problems with the business. They did small jobs for the surveyor, such as log jam, tree cutting, and they were very competitive in their price. Uh, but their insurance lapsed, and we give them another job. Uh, once I found out about it, I canceled their uh, any future jobs. Kelly is also under investigation by Indiana State Police. The questionable disbursements could become criminal charges. In Muncie, Megan Royst, Newslink, Indiana. For more information on this story, you can tune in to newslinkindiana.com. More angry supporters of Garfield Elementary voiced their concerns at another public hearing last night. Some parents feared their children will be inconvenienced if the proposed closing of the school happens. Other parents called the plan just a reaction to the state's guidelines for the No Child Left Behind program. They think closing the school will hurt Garfield students. Instead of sort of helping pull them out of the water, they're throwing more weight on them to ensure that they drown. The school board will make its final decision on April 14th. The apparent torturing and killing of a dog outside of Winchester may be linked to several other animal abuse cases in Ohio. Newslink Indiana's Morgan Parker has the story. If we've ever done that, they should do the same thing to them. Public outrage this week as word spread of the discovery of a beaten, tortured dog on the side of County Road 200 East in Winchester. A young girl riding her bike found the carcass. The dog had several lacerations and a bike chain around its neck. It's disgraceful. I mean, if anybody's not going to take care of a pet, you know, put it up for adoption or something. You know, don't, don't torture it. The Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals is offering a $2,500 reward for anyone who can identify the person responsible for the crime. However, this attack on an animal has turned out to be just one of several recent cases. According to Randolph County Sheriff Deputy Steve Acri, Police have also learned of several similar incidents recently reported just an hour away in Bellefontaine, Ohio. Within a few days, they've uh, found several mutilated dogs uh, near a river. Local officials and the SPCA are hoping the reward will help lead to an arrest. They need to put a stop to it. I mean, that's, that's, that's disgusting why they do animals like that. The investigation of the incident is still underway. In Winchester, Morgan Parker, Newslink, Indiana. The Indiana Horse Racing Commission is cracking its whip. Last week, the commission passed a new horse whipping regulation that is the strictest in the country. Newslink Indiana's Eric Pete went to Anderson to find out how the new rules are affecting racers at Hoosier Park. Jim Shelton has seen many changes in 23 years of standard bred racing. So when a new rule restricting horse whipping took effect, he was ready for it. You know, I think it'll be a good rule. I mean, once everybody gets accustomed to it, nobody's really up for change. You know, nobody likes change, but regardless, you're going to have change. Drivers used to be able to use a full arm motion when whipping a horse. But now, because of the new rules, they're limited to a flick of the wrist. However, Shelton says this won't change the effectiveness of the whipping. It's there. I mean, I don't know if you've ever been hit with a switch or anything like that. It doesn't matter how hard you swing it, you still feel it. While animal activists were a large part of the change, most of the whipping action is not directed at the horse. It's aimed at the shaft of the race bike or the saddle pad. Shelton says the rule is worth it to keep all drivers on the same level. It's a serious rule, and it ought to be. I mean, if everybody's playing on the same playing field, you know, so be it. Punishment for violating the rule may involve suspensions and fines up to $1,000. In Anderson, Eric Pete, Newslink, Indiana. 
Smokers across America will be digging deeper into their pockets to support their nicotine habits. The federal tobacco tax for a pack of cigarettes increased from 39 cents to a dollar and one cent today, something smokers are not very happy about. You're going to have a lot of irate non-smokers because they can't afford them, which is going to cause more rage than what we already have with our economy. To help quit smoking, call Indiana Tobacco Quit Line at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. The expression food for thought took a different meaning in Richmond today as NewsLink Indiana's Fefe explains people were able to eat their favorite books. This is all edible. This rich man gathering was not only about food, it was also about knowledge. As the Indiana University East Campus held its first annual edible book festival, it was a food preparation contest in which all of the entries referred to characters or scenes from books. I think it's mainly for fun, but it does introduce some books I think that people maybe haven't seen or, or thought about, you know. It'll make you think about books in a different way. The festival began in 2000, and over the past nine years, more than nine countries have joined in the celebration. Anyone can participate, and the only rule is everything has to be edible. Often, though, it's hard for people to snatch the books because they look so good. Well, that's always the hard part. Whether it's a cake that you did instantly or it took all day, the first knife cut through the cake hurts a little, but you know, you're glad that everybody else is enjoying it. People can vote for their favorite cake in six different categories, and I choose number three for the best in show. The winners, by the way, get real books for prizes. In Richmond, Xu Feifei, News Link, Indiana. And now uh, we are joined with Christy Cata Henry with our look at our weather. Today was very beautiful. Yes. Are we going to keep it around for a while? Unfortunately not. I know it's spring, so you have to expect the yeah. rain and the thunderstorms. But um, as we go ahead and look at the weather headlines, we I do want to wrap up of March summer. We did have 18 degrees above average, which makes it pretty mild. We did have a dry month. Uh, we were actually an inch below what we're supposed to be, and we only had a trace of snow which that's pretty uncommon in the month of March. As we go ahead and look at your satellite and radar, we can see the rain in the core front that moved through yesterday has well pushed off towards the east, allowing clear, clear skies across Indiana, giving us that sunshine. We are, beh are behind that low uh, high pressure system, which is making those winds coming from the south and uh, making them much warmer for today. And as we go ahead and look at precision cast, like I said, that cold front moved through yesterday or this morning. We do have another a uh, low pressure system moving towards us that will hit us tomorrow night and go is going into third or Friday, in which will Friday will be mostly rainy day and we will struggle to get out of 50. For tonight, you can expect partly cloudy conditions again, a chilly night, low of 41 degrees. Those winds are out of south southwest at six to eight miles per hour. And for tomorrow, if you want to go outside, make sure you go outside early because that rain change is coming to play after 2 p.m. We will see a mild day with the temperatures of 63 degrees. Again, those winds are southeast at 7 to 13 miles per hour. And those winds will going to pick up as we go into tomorrow night and into to Friday. And go ahead and look at your five-day outlook. Thursday, like I said, get your uh, activities planned in the morning as rain comes into play in the afternoon. Friday, a cold day. Well, it will be 50 degrees. Mostly rainy Saturday, we do see that sun come back into play, but things again change as we go on into Sunday with a chance of a thunderstorm comes back into play. And again on Monday, temperatures only 45 degrees and that rain, and look at that low, 29 degrees. So it's gonna be pretty chilly when we go on to the rest of the next week. And of course, it is the first day of April, so you know, the April the showers, showers bring May flowers. That's and right. I guess it's not gonna disappoint right. this week. Yeah. So. Anyway, those are the latest headlines for this Wednesday, April the 1st of 2009. I'm Sam Thomas. Thanks for watching NewsLinkIndiana.com.